Hello and happy Thursday. Rachel Hansen here. It is time for Simply Fun Cocktails. First of all, need to apologize because last week I totally forgot when it was Thursday and it totally just slipped my mind until later in the afternoon and I thought about coming um, back on Friday and making a cocktail and then it just didn't happen and I'm really sorry. So I'm going to make it up to you guys. Have no fear. I've got two cocktails for you guys this week. Okay. Um, Right now, I am chopping up some candy canes. Hi, Michelle. Michelle, I'm so glad I got to see you and I get to see you next week. I'm super excited. All right, so I'm using the manual food processor and I've just got some mini candy canes in here. Um, we are using up some Christmas leftovers. So, you know, raise your hand if you've got some extra candy canes, small or big, hanging around. Um, I've got a ton of them because I have small children and so there's candy canes everywhere. I'm trying to find a good one right now for my glass. Here we go. All right, so I'm chopping up some candy canes. So we're gonna make two uh, cocktails today. The first one is a peppermint white Christmas champagne cocktail. Now this would be really great for Christmas, um, but I'm really excited about this one now because we've got candy canes to use up, We've got champagne left over from New Year's, and so it's gonna be a great way to kind of use those leftovers and make something new and different. So, we're starting by just chopping up candy canes, basically making a dust out of it, uh, and we're gonna use that to rim the glass. All right, whew, minty. Uh, this is also a great thing to do with your candy canes. You can chop them up like this, and then you can put them in hot cocoa mix. And then you can have like peppermint hot cocoa. So you can just buy the cheap hot cocoa mix and you just put like candy cane dust in there and then you can make mint hot chocolate. Um, or if you want to give a gift, you get a little prep bowl and you put some hot chocolate in there, you put some chopped candy canes um, and then some marshmallows and wrap it up and it makes a cute little gift also. Did a lot of those for the holidays. A lot of people gave those away. So, okay. So we've got this crushed up and um, all right, so this, Michelle, I was actually just thinking of you um, because this recipe calls for some white creme de cocoa and you just had some that you were trying to find a home for. Remember I said, when would I use white creme de cocoa? Turns out this recipe. Um, but we're gonna just use regular creme de cocoa and see what happens. I think the difference honestly is just gonna be the color. It's kind of like with a white rum or a dark rum, the big difference is the color. Um, so I'm sure it's gonna be one of those things where it like looks funny, but it's gonna taste great. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of creme de coco in a dish here. Um, and I'm just gonna dip my glass in it. All right. And then we'll dip that in the candy cane. All right. All right, so now we've got candy cane rim on our glass. All right, so now for this for this recipe, guys, this is a super easy recipe, I can't even tell you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the glass about a third of the way full with creme de coco. And look, the stuff that I just dipped, we're just gonna use that. We're not gonna let anything go to waste. That's alcohol abuse, we don't do that around here. Um, so about a third of the way full, I'll put a little bit more in here. All right, and then we just top it off with champagne. And that's it pretty easy. So um, for those of you who are following my saga, this is the champagne bottle that was out in the snow. I got the cork out. Um, the cork ripped in half on New Year's Eve when we were trying to get it out. And so I stuck it out in the snow, like aimed away from the house. Because if you're not aware, a, a champagne bottle, after you take that cage off, there's a lot of pressure built up in a champagne bottle. After you take that cage off that holds the cork on, it can pop off at any time which is why when you open champagne, you're supposed to take that cage off and keep your hand over the cork so it doesn't fly out and hit you, hit somebody else, hit something in your house. Um, if you want some cheap entertainment, Google people opening champagne and failing miserably. They're kind of funny, but then you feel bad for them. Um, anyway, one of the things that I learned during this, uh, this saga is that champagne is much more likely to bust open um, and it has a lot more pressure when it, it makes sense when it's warm, right? And everything's kind of expanded in there. It's much more likely to bust when it's warm. So 
So I threw it out in the snow and it stayed stable. Um, and I did end up using like a manual old school wine bottle opener to get it out, the cork out, made sure to aim it away from me in case it popped that the metal wine opener would go that way, not this way. Um, but because it was nice and cold, the cork came out nice and slowly, so that was good. Had it been warmed up, it could have been more dangerous. So there you go. Things I learned about champagne. And it's still nicely chilled. There's some snow. Okay. So we're just going to top this off. And there we go. Now, I'm going to top this. champagne stopper because guess what? I'm not going to drink a whole bottle of champagne today. This champagne stopper is going to keep this nice and fresh and bubbly. Um, and actually we're going to come back to this bottle next week. We're going to use this next Thursday. Uh, I'll tell you about that in a couple minutes. Um, but it will still be bubbly. So stay tuned for that. We'll open it next week. All right, great. Peppermint white Christmas champagne cocktail. Boom. Easy. I don't think it looks bad with the with the dark creme de coco. It kind of looks like beer, honestly. Let's see how it tastes. Hmm. That's interesting. It's like a chocolatey champagne with like peppermint, but it's nice and sparkly. It's different. It's different, but it's also nice and light. Like it's a nice way I think to use creme de coco, but make it light. Cause a lot of times you use that in a heavier drink. Um, so yeah, that's not bad. Let's switch gears and make a heavier drink. You ready? So we'll set that over here. Guys, I have to drink two cocktails today. My life is rough. All right. Sugar cookie martini. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a sugar cookie martini because again, this would be again, another one to make during the holidays, which would be fun. But who here has leftover cookies? Okay, whether they're decorated or not, does anybody have leftover sugar cookies, cut out cookies from the holidays? because I know I've got a whole bucket of them. So this is going to be um, a sugar cookie martini and we can use up uh, some of our, our cookies there. So let's get some stuff out of the way. Um, and even though it's a martini, I'm actually going to make it in this, this fluted glass. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute because we're, we're going to put a rim on this one also. All right, so to, um, to make this glass, to rim this glass, we're gonna take some sprinkles, um, whatever you want. I know, sugar cookie martini sounds so good. So again, I'm gonna use some leftovers. I'm all about using up some leftover stuff, guys. You know how like after a birthday party, you're still using plates from that birthday party for like the next four months for any time you have people over and it doesn't matter because you just need to use it up? That's kind of the plan we're going for right now with red and green sprinkles. Okay, because we used a bunch of them for Christmas for stuff. And now I'm going to put them on my martini because we're going to use them up. Okay. All right. So we've got some red and green sprinkles here. Let's kind of mix those together. It could be anything you want. Um, I have some nice like um, crystal sprinkles that are like, it looks like glitter. That would be really pretty on here, I think. But we're going to use up what we have here. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some white frosting. You can make your own or you can get a tub. And this is why I'm not using a martini glass because we need to put frosting on the rim of this glass and watch this. Oh wow, it fits perfectly. Excellent, oh that's a lot of frosting. Hmm. Um, anybody worried about too much frosting? Cause I'm not, I am not. Okay, so we got frosting on there and then we Dip it in sprinkles. Do, 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 do. Get some extra sprinkles on that frosting. Okay, so there we go. We've got frosting and sprinkles. One side's got more frosting. All right, so we're done with that. And now we've got a mix of sprinkles. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, here we're gonna get out our cocktail shaker set. This, this one was easy. We didn't even have to mix anything. We just poured it in the glass and the champagne's so bubbly, it does all the mixing for you. You don't even have to get out the shaker or anything. This is like easiest cocktail ever. All right, what we're gonna do in here is we are gonna use a 
half of a cup of whole milk. We're gonna go with skim because A, that's what I have on hand, B, it's a little bit healthier. So half of a cup is about four ounces. So we're gonna go up to the four ounce line over here. Okay, and we need a fourth of a cup of Irish cream, which is two ounces. So we can go ahead and use our jigger for that. Go to the top line. And we need, um, it's interesting, this recipe calls for a fourth of a cup of Irish cream, but then two ounces of vanilla vodka and two ounces of amaretto. Two ounces is the same as a fourth of a cup, which is interesting. Okay, so two ounces each, vanilla vodka and amaretto. And I know we've been using this for a few recipes lately, um, but again, like if you're gonna get something special like vanilla vodka and have it on hand, I would rather you have a few different ideas of how to use it versus just one cocktail that you're gonna get real sick of real fast. So um, hopefully, hopefully having a few ideas is not a bad thing. Hopefully you don't mind. All right, so two ounces of each goes in here. Um, then we're gonna get some ice. here and shake. Shake until it's cold and stainless steel. You'll know when it's cold. All right. I super apologize if anybody has started New Year's diets and this is not on your diet. Everything in moderation, my friends, says the girl who has two cocktails on a Thursday. But for the record, I just had to deal with winter break, so it's well-deserved. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and pour this in. All right, now I got a tip from um, a friend of mine. Let's see, who was it? Was it uh, Becca? I think Becca gave me this tip. A plus to you, girlfriend. Um, she found that pouring it, I've always been pouring right out of the middle, but if you turn it just a little bit and pour right where these little notches are, it pours a little bit easier. I was like, really? Brilliant. So there we go. Oh, that's pretty. That makes a whole lot of martini. Oh my gosh, that's really pretty. I kind of like that. Oh, and you garnish it. Of course, it would not be a sugar cookie martini without your sugar cookie garnish. Oh, isn't that cute? He's like swimming in there. Okay. So there we go. Oh, I gotta try it. I gotta try it. Make sure it's okay. Okay. Holy buckets, guys, that's really good. Hey, you need to try that. It literally tastes like a liquid sugar cookie, especially with the frosting and the sprinkles. That's delicious. That's really good, okay. A plus, A plus to me. That's delicious. And I bet if you had whole milk where it's a little bit thicker, the um, the cookie would sit a little bit better. Um, or if you wanted to be super fancy, you could make your cutout cookies, but like before you bake them, you could cut a little slit into it so that they would... Sorry, I had to decline a call. Um, so, there we go. Now, next week, next week we're gonna, I said we're gonna use the rest of the champagne. Well, not the rest of it. We're gonna use some champagne next week, okay? And we're gonna do something really interesting that I'm kind of excited about. It's gonna be very different. Um, we're gonna make an Earl Grey infused champagne cocktail. So all it takes is um, Earl Grey infused vodka, uh, cha some champagne and like a lemon twist. So I've got plenty of lemons here. We've got the champagne that I'm just gonna keep chilled until next week, um, but we need to make infused vodka. Now, if you haven't made your own infused vodka before, I will tell you it's very simple. Um, we make our own infused vodka for Bloody Marys, and it is so good. And I'm telling you, you can use like the cheap vodka uh, for that because I put a bunch of vegetables in it and you just let it sit. So I, I literally take a mason jar, I put a bunch of vegetables, tomatoes and onions and peppers and jalapenos, 
Um, tomatoes, onions, peppers, jalapenos, yeah. Put them in there and just pour the vodka on top and close it up and let it sit. Over time, all that color and flavor from the vegetables is gonna soak into the vodka and the vodka is gonna turn this like, honestly nasty cloudy yellow color. It takes a long time for this to happen, like months. But it turns this nasty color of yellow and the fruit loses all of its color. The fruits and the veggies and they turn white. Um, but I just leave them all in there. It's fine. It's, it's shelf stable because there's all alcohol. Um, and then when you open it up and you smell it, all you can smell is vegetables. And when you use that for Bloody Marys, my goodness, my friends, you cannot tell that there is vodka in there because it just tastes like vegetables. It's really, really good. And a really great way to use up um, some vodka that you have that's just sitting around that, like I said, maybe is not your top shelf vodka. So uh, what we're gonna do for, for this uh, is we're going to make Earl Grey infused vodka. I've never made this before, so I'm excited to try it. So I'm taking just two Earl Grey tea bags. Uh, I'm just cutting off the string and the tag and I'm putting these in here. Um, and then it says to put a cup of vodka in there and let it sit for 24 hours. I'm going to let it sit longer because we don't need it until next week. And I have a lot of vodka and I'm really hoping that this is good. So I'm actually just gonna do about two cups. I'm just gonna fill my mason jar with vodka. Uh, now, of course, you can use your tea that is caffeinated or you can be like me and use decaf. So, um, this is kind of like a cold brew type thing for those of you who do the cold brew coffee like me because you're literally just putting it in there and just letting it sit. So, all right, so now I've got vodka with tea bags in it and we're going to let this sit. Um, I'll take the tea bags out before we use it and I'm assuming that this vodka is going to turn a little bit darker color. Um, it's going to be infused with all those flavors of the tea. And so then next week we're going to put some of this in with some champagne and a lemon twist and it's an Earl Grey infused champagne cocktail. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, but in the meantime, this is just gonna sit um, and you can take, when, when it's time, you can take the tea bags out and you can just let this sit for a few months, it'll be fine. Um, so there you go. Now you guys know what's coming next week, it's super easy. And if you want to make your cocktail along with me next week, now you know all you need to do is get your vodka ready, um, get some of your leftover champagne ready to go, and you can join me next week, next Thursday, 12.30 for Simply Fun Cocktails. So sorry I kept you guys a little bit long this time, but like I said, I wanted to make up for not being here last week. Oops. Uh, hope you guys all had a fabulous holiday season. I hope you had a great New Year's. Um, I'm excited to join you again every Thursday this year. I'm glad you guys have been enjoying it. And uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great week, everyone.